Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Ignition Time. I hope our community, our family is having a wonderful day. Folks, President Biden is unveiling a massive, massive family aid plan that is funded by taxing the rich. In this episode, I'll give you all the important details that you need to know. Welcome to this episode of Ignition Time where we cover important matters pertaining to the country, the economy as well as our money. A big, big ambitious proposal from President Biden. This is going to be an additional one point eight trillion dollars American families plan and this is going to include enhancements for education and they're going to be tax cuts that are financed by increased taxes on the rich. Here's a headline of an article on your screen from Bloomberg that covers this information in more detail. As always, we'll provide you with a link to the article in the description section below so you can check it out. I'm going to quote directly from the article. President Biden will unveil a sweeping $1.8 trillion plan to expand educational opportunities and childcare for families, funded in part by the largest tax increases on wealthy Americans in decades. And this is going to be in his joint session or the joint session addressed to Congress. This is going to be called the American Families Plan. And and this is going to be the third major proposal from President Biden after the American Rescue Plan and the American Jobs Plan. This is going to combine $1 trillion in spending with $800 billion in tax cuts and credits for middle income and low income families. And folks, what is incredible about this plan is that this plan would make pre-kindergarten as well as community college free across the country. We're talking universal pre-K and free community college. It would extend the child tax credit through 2025 and make permanent an expansion of the earned income tax credit to childless adults with low incomes. It would also provide more support to families for childcare. It would even provide more money and it would finance teacher training, which is very important. And it would create a national paid family leave program. This is a very ambitious proposal, folks. Something like this has never been done in the United States of America before. Here's a quote from the White House senior advisor Anita Dunn. She wrote this in a memo that was obtained by Bloomberg. The president has been clear that our tax system is broken when a hedge fund manager making hundreds of millions of dollars is paying taxes at a lower rate than the janitor working in his office or the housekeeper at his mansion. Anita Dunn also wrote this and he meaning President Biden is going to take steps, steps which are supported by the American public to address the fairness in the tax code. And folks, another White House aide, David Kamen, who's a deputy director at the National Economic Council, described President Biden's latest proposal as a plan aimed at improving children in America and education and thus the future of the country. This is what David said. He said this is very good evidence at this point that policies like the child tax credit end up in better outcomes for kids. You can look at it in terms of test scores, in terms of future earnings. So these are important ways of helping families right now, but they are also the key to a future. So what the Biden administration is saying, hey, when we invest in our children, we are investing in the future of America. So folks, the big question is what does the one and only conservative Democrat from West Virginia, Senator Joe Manchin, tend to think. Well, here's new reporting from Bloomberg that gives us an insight into where he's at. Now, Democrat Senator Joe Manchin, again, the conservative senator from West Virginia, suggested that he is OK with tax increases other than raising the corporate tax rate to 25 percent. He first wants to make sure the government collects all the tax dollars that are due to the government. In other words, make sure that we collect more money from the rich potentially by doing other things like reinforcing the IRS. Here's a direct quote from Senator Joe Manchin. He said, don't you think we ought to figure out why we are not collecting what we are asking for and what people owe? I want to figure that out first. Also in related news, new headline on your screen, this time from the New York Times, Biden details $1.8 trillion plan for workers, students and families. This is the proposed American families plan that I've talked about in our video. And this would expand access to education and childcare. And it would be financed partly in higher taxes on wealthier Americans. Keep in mind that we need to, at some point, also collect the money that is already owed to us. Meaning the IRS should be able to collect the money that is owed to the federal government from the wealthy individuals who find ways to avoid taxes. Now, as always, I try and present you with both points of view on our channel because on our channel, I want you to have the truth and I want you to make the decision for yourself. Here's an interesting set of comments from Bruce Fuller, who's a professor of education at the University of California, Berkeley. He questioned whether states would do their part to fund the expansion and said the goal of paying all the early childhood workers $15 per hour was too modest to broadly improve the quality and stability of the workforce. He said, how governors weigh these competing priorities ethically and politically remains an open question. In other words, what Fuller is saying is President Biden can have whatever ambitious goals he wants. It is going to be difficult for the states 
to be able to implement those changes, including $15 an hour minimum wage for federal contractors who are working in individual states. And folks, if you thought that was interesting, check out this new headline from the Wall Street Journal. Some Democrats are not sold on President Biden's proposed capital gains tax boost. The idea to raise revenue from high income thresholds, which is not new, it's something that President Biden campaigned on, would help pay for President Biden's $4 trillion in stimulus. I'm talking about the American Jobs Plan, which is $2.2 trillion, and the American Families Plan, which is $1.8 trillion. So we need $4 trillion to pay for all of this. Now, some of this will come from money that already exists, but a significant amount of money is going to have to be raised by the US government. That much is for sure. Let's take a look at an interesting comment from a Democratic senator from New Jersey, Senator Bob Menendez. He said this, for me, it is what you're doing, the totality of the package, and how does it affect the ability of growth to continue to take place? That's how I'm judging it right now. It seems like a rather high rate to me. Folks, it's very clear that the federal government has a certain agenda. In fact, it's the agenda that President Biden campaigned on. But different senators in different states across the country who represent their constituents, not just Republicans, but also Democrats are like, eh, wait a minute, it's not going to be that easy. The important thing is that the discussion has begun and I personally remain hopeful that the Democrats and the Republicans can find some way, some amalgamation, some consortium, some combination, united ideas that can move the country forward. But it's very clear that some individuals are going to have to compromise. But it, it's also clear that the White House and President Biden have essentially opened the conversation. They've actually established the foundation of what the negotiations could look like. And I believe what's happening is positive. And I do believe we are likely to see some sort of an agreement. And hopefully the Democrats don't have to go, don't have to go or their own way and do this entire thing through the process of reconciliation. Hopefully the Republicans can be involved and hopefully we can have good ideas from both sides that benefit a majority of the American people, specifically those who need help the most. Now, as you can imagine, the Republican senators have their reservations. Here's a comment from Senator John Thune, the Republican senator from South Dakota, who's the number two Senate Democrat behind the Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. Here's a direct quote from Senator Thune. Even if the spending is popular, and by the way, this is something that the White House continues to reiterate. It's popular, it's popular, it's popular, and therefore it's bipartisan. Thune says, even if the spending is popular, and a lot of it probably will be, the tax increases, I think, are going to be a hard sell, not just for people in the country or with Republicans, but I think with some Democrats too. So Thune is actually sounding a warning about conservative Democrats like Joe Manchin. Yes, you heard that right. Conservative Democrats like Joe Manchin potentially stalling the Biden agenda. Thune also said this, I think they realize that you really run the risk of stepping on a lot of economic growth. Let me know what you think is likely to happen. Please comment below and let me know. Please click like, please subscribe, please enable notifications. I want you to know that I work hard on this channel every single day to bring you the latest news. All I ask of you is you please click the like button, please subscribe, please enable notifications. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Take care, bye.